Now let's continue reading. It is prohibited to sell or trade what one has not received. Yes, i.e., it is not permissible for someone to sell merchandise that he bought before taking possession of it. Yes, you do own it though. By the mere contract, you own that but you can't sell what you own here because you haven't received it yet. Receive it means to take possession of it. For example, if Zaid buys one saw of wheat from Amr, he is not allowed to sell it unless he receives it first, although it's his, by the mere sale. Taking possession of the merchandise varies depending on the item. Basically, have three levels. If the item cannot be transported, then taking possession is done by yielding control of the item to the buyer and by vacating the property of what does not belong to the buyer. If the item can be transported, then, take, then possessing it is done by physically taking hold of it, if possible, or by moving it to a place that does not belong to the seller. All right. This is correct. But the way I learned it and the way that I would teach it is just the reverse of what's presented here. What's presented here is, okay, taking possession of the merchandise varies depending on the item. That's correct. So what's the first point? First point mentioned here is if the item cannot be transported. And then the second point is if the item can be transported. So I would reverse it, and that's how I learned it. I would start. If the item can be transported, because that's most of the time. Most of the time you're buying something that you can just take in your hand and go away with it, put it in a bag and move on. So if the item can be transported, then taking possession is done by physically taking hold of it if possible. Yani, if the item can be transported, then there's two cases. There's two cases. Physically taking hold of it, like when you just go to the store and you buy a bottle of water, give the money, you take the water and you leave or anything else like that. Or if you can't physically take hold of it by moving it to a place that does not belong to the seller. So that's going to be like buying a car, something bigger. Or for example, buying a refrigerator. It is uh, transportable, but not merely by taking it in your hand. Then you need to just get it off of the seller's property. And if the item cannot be transported like it's a house or a ship, not just a boat, not a small boat, but a ship, then taking possession is done by yielding control of the item to the buyer, like giving him the keys and vacating this property, the ship or this house of what does not belong to this new buyer. But you could say to him, anything in there, you can have it if you want. Get off or get it off. To get it off of the buyer's property. To remove it from the buyer, from the seller's property, from the seller's property. To remove it from the seller's property. It's yours though, don't forget. Even if you didn't remove it from the seller's property, if you purchased it, it's yours. But you can't sell it until you receive it. And in this case, since it's too big to take it in your hand, then it's not going to be counted that you received it until you get it off of the seller's property. Now it's received and now you can sell it. Also, meat for living animals, whether or not the animals are edible. So this is not case of riba here. The meat is food. Living animals is not food. So this is not a case of food for food. So don't be confused. So what's the prohibition here then? Not because this is riba, but because the messenger of Allah forbade it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Meat, that's money. Living animals, that's money. But this is a case where you cannot exchange this money for this money. Because the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, forbade the exchange of these monies for each other. Any kind of meat for any kind of living animal. Or one debt for another debt. This is an important one. This is something that's broad and abstract. 
and it covers several scenarios. If you can identify a debt for a debt, then probably you're not too bad in the subject of Islamic dealings. Let's see what it says here. Such as for person A to give a dinar to person B on the spot to pay up front in exchange for, Yanni, to pay up front for a saw of wheat, let's say, a pitcher of wheat that is to be delivered in an appointed time in the future. So he told him, here's, here's the coin for the pitcher of wheat. I'm paying you now. You're going to deliver later. So that delivery, that's the debt right there. Then for person A, who is now owed a delivery, so that means he has the right to a debt. Then for person A to sell the undelivered wheat to person C for a dinar. A dinar that is to be delivered at a later time. He's going to pay him a dinar later. That means he's saying, I got a pitcher of wheat coming. I'll sell it to you for a dinar. So he says, okay. I don't have any money on me. He says, cool, I'll get it from you later. He says, okay, I accept. Right here, that's a debt for a debt. Invalid. An important, obvious case of debt for a debt in the religion. Obvious case in the religion. Uh, is the case of hiring a company. Not hiring anyone in particular. Hiring a company or hiring an agency without paying them up front. That falls under a debt for a debt because hiring an agency is different from hiring an individual. You can hire an individual. That means you do a contract with them, say, I hire you for such and such amount of money to work for me, etc. A very clear contract. And he says, I accept. And one of your provisions is that you're going to pay him later. So you just hired him now and you're going to pay him later. This is valid. But not when you're hiring an agency. Because agency means you're not hiring anyone in particular. If you're not hiring anyone in particular, this means you're hiring this agency to complete a task. So when you hire an agency to complete a task, this is a debt. Hiring the agency, yani no one in particular, to complete a task, this is a debt. So it means it doesn't matter who's going to come and do the work. That's not the deal. Then for this debt, you must pay up front because it's not valid to sell a debt for a debt. What one does not own or is not authorized to sell? You said you didn't quite fathom. Okay. That last example. Yes. Okay. Uh, so there's two types of hiring. Ijaratu ayn wa ijaratu dhimma. Ijaratu ayn means hiring an individual. This is when you hire some person in particular or when you rent some car in particular or for example some donkey or horse in particular that's ijaratu ayn or some house in particular ijaratu dhimma that's when you go to someone and you're not going to hire him to do the work you're not hiring him in particular yes uh and rather you say to him yeah in Arabic, you might say to him, ذمتك, which I'm translating as, I hire your agency. Or it means something to the effect of, I'm putting money on your tab. I'm putting money on your tab for you to get some work done for me. Yani, to get it done for me. Not for you personally. You're just handling the contract with me now. But I don't know who's going to come to the house and do it. Whether you do it, or one of your workers does it, or you know you have some temporary, uh, temporary agency or whatever, as long as you get this work done for me, that's all my concern is here. I'm putting money on your tab now. So this money you put on his tab, Yanni, is 
you're putting it on his tab. This is the way to do it, actually. You're putting it on his tab for a debt, which is for someone, no one in particular, to do this work, such and such work, to build a fence. So you go to a company, you see it says professional fence builders. Say, I would like a fence around my house. So you go in there and then you say to them, I hire your agency to build a fence around my house. So who's going to do the work? Whoever they send. If it takes more than one day, they might send different people. Because what matters is that the work gets done. Not You're not hiring anyone in particular. Okay. So it's going to be a debt if you don't pay him up front. Because he's, he owes you. He owes you. Yanni, who owes you? Whoever has the agency. The agency is uh, what you hired this abstract thing here not some person so that's why for example if you hired an agency to transport your belongings and in the middle of the transport the car broke down or the donkey died it's on them to get a new car or a new donkey because you didn't rent the donkey or the car in particular this is its own type of hiring and when you hire this way you need to pay up front so that you're not paying for, you're not getting a debt for a debt. The debt is that they're going to owe you work. Somebody's going to do the work. That's the debt. So you need to pay up front now or else it's going to be a debt for a debt. So if the agencies say, give me half and pay me done when it's done, is that lawful? All I know that that's not valid. You have to pay up front. This type of work is like, it is similar to if someone sells by order, like you need to order something from him and then he'll get it for you. The same judgment here. This goes right here. What I'm telling you now goes here in our current subject, selling a debt for a debt. A person, he works in the import expert, the import export business. You want something in order to get it from him. You're not just going to go to a store and buy it from him and take it and go. Rather, you're basically going to put an order in. You're going to say to him, I want you to get such and such for me. If this, what you want to buy, fulfills the conditions, then you must pay up front. Because if you don't pay up front, it's going to be a debt for a debt. So you can't say to him, I'm putting in this order now. I want you to bring back for me uh, some Sri Lankan spice. I want five kilos of that red Sri Lankan spice ground. Fine. Now, how much is that going to be? 500? All right. I'll pay you later. So you're going to deliver to me? When are you going to deliver that for me? Two weeks? All right. I'll get the money to you in a few days, for example. This is invalid here. That's a debt for a debt. This case of hiring an agency is the brother of this case here. Is it clear? How about for you, Habibi Bilal, is it clear? I mean, in YouTube. You said, is a debt for a debt, H-S-N? Maybe you meant to say something. A sin? I don't know what this is supposed to say here. Oh, Home Shopping Network. I don't know. I don't know how it goes. Shake the Home Shopping Center is you buy, you uh, make a contract over the phone with what they're selling to buy the item and you pay it in installments. Um, then they're going to deliver it to you. And they deliver it before you finish paying. Yes. I don't know. But the case that I was telling you, I was referring in particular to a type of sale called Selem sale. That's why I said if it fulfills the conditions and that's why I gave the example of the Sri Lankan spice. I didn't give an example of a watch or something like that, something that's made of components and pieces and elements. The example I gave is everything in the, in what's being purchased is the same substance. It's all one substance. So, so I don't know the answer to the question you're asking. Not seeing firsthand, you can't sell it or buy it. Whether one or both contracting parties have not seen it before the contract. Meaning you can't 
buy something that you haven't seen, a particular thing that you haven't seen. And also, you can't sell a particular thing that you haven't seen. Don't forget, buying and selling are really the same thing. What makes the difference between buying and selling is just uh, really the, uh, the prepositional object in the statement. Say, I sell to you. I buy from you. That's what makes the difference. But really, it's the same thing. The sale and the purchase are the same thing. So you can't sell or buy what you have not seen firsthand. We talk about if it's a specific thing. It says here, although according to a ruling of a shafi'i, if the merchandise is described in a way that prevents the buyer's complete ignorance of it, then the sale is allowed. Yes. Firsthand, it means saw it with your own eyes. Or though, or unless you authorize someone to see it for you. Does it apply to online sales? No, it does not. Because we're talking about here buying a thing in particular, not a kind of thing. If you order something online, you're buying a kind of thing. No, picture of the item is not fine as long as it's the exact item. No. We talk about here seeing the thing itself. Picture of the thing is just a description of it. A picture of the thing is just like if someone says to you, yeah, I have this car, it's such and such year, such and such make and model, this color, etc. Leather seats, leather interior, this and that, this and that, such and such engine, such and such whatever, four-wheel drive, etc., etc., etc. Those words I just said now for describing something, that's what a picture is. So it's not seeing the thing. So what one has not seen firsthand Unless you authorize someone to see it for you. Then your authorized person has to see it firsthand. And it's going to be like you saw it. Whether one or both contracting parties, meaning the seller or the buyer, have not seen it before the contract. But what does it mean right here? Remember, this is very important or you're not going to understand this case. It here means a specific thing. A specific thing. Not a described kind of thing. When you buy online, because you basically, your questions here mean, well, this seems like I can't buy something online then. If it's a condition that I can only buy something that I saw firsthand. No, you can still buy online. And what's being mentioned here is not that. Because what's being mentioned here is talking about when you're buying a specific thing. What that means is, like, when you're actually in a store, you're going through the market, and you're putting all the items into your shopping cart. So all these things, these are the things you want to buy in particular, not the other ones that are still on the shelf that look just like the thing you, that you put into your cart. Not all the duplicates of the thing that you took off of the shelf. You're not buying those. You're buying this one in particular, the one that you took in your hand and put into your cart. So whenever you buy something in particular, then you need to see that thing. Or if you're selling it in particular, you're selling this thing in particular, you need to see that thing in order for the sale to be valid. But we just said, isn't it possible to go to somebody and put in an order and tell them, yeah, I want to order from you this, uh, the red Sri Lankan spice fine, uh, uh, ground finally. So that means he doesn't have it right there. And you say to him, when are you going to be able to deliver it? He says, I can deliver it in two weeks. He says, okay. So what you're going to do, you're going to pay him up front. Now you're paying for something that you never saw. But that's because of the nature of this type of sale. Because you're not buying something in particular. You're buying a described thing. Something described, he has to bring you something that matches the description of what you're buying. And then when he delivers it in two weeks, it has to meet the descriptions that you agreed upon. And if it does, then you have to accept it. You paid him up front, and when he delivers to you what fulfills the descriptions, then you have to accept it. You can't cancel the sale here.
So this paragraph we're reading right now is not that. This is the case of buying something in particular. Yani, had that statement been in this paragraph here, that would be good. What one has not seen, meaning buying something in particular that one has not seen, buying or selling, something in particular that one has not seen firsthand. Now, according to this, before we go into any details, staying right here, building on this rule here that you can't buy something in particular that you haven't seen, then this means when you order from a restaurant, if you want to take this saying, which this is strong saying in Shafi'i school, when you order from a restaurant like to go, you need to open up that food and look at it before you leave. Or else you will have purchased something in particular that you never saw. Now, add to that what we talked about before about a person who leaves the session. Invalid contract on top of invalid contract. He goes into the store, he makes his order, he purchases, he pays for something that doesn't exist, and then he leaves the store and says, I'll be back. Right there, he invalidated his contract. When he came back, he never renewed the contract, and instead he took that food and left his money without a valid contract. That's haram, and he never even opened up the bag to look inside to see what he ordered, and he just relied on the fact that they, they put in there what he ordered from them. Then he purchased something in particular that he never saw, invalid on top of invalid. Yes. Still here. Before we mention any other saying, according to this rule, that you cannot purchase something in particular that you never saw, this does not include seeing something that's concealed for the protection of the item. Its sealing or its cover protects it. If you uncover it, then it's as if you spoiled it. To open it up is like spoiling it. Then you can just buy it the way it is. So that's going to be like a banana. Because you can't stand right there at the cash register, open up all the bananas before you go home just to see them because you don't want the peel, really. Or that's going to be like a can of tuna fish. Because you're not going to sit there right there at the cash register and say, hold on, let me see this tuna inside of here. And then you open it up and look. Now you're going to close it back up. It's a good thing I bought my Tupperware so I can just dump this here into this plastic container here and seal it and take it home with me. Uh, so that's this rule. Although, according to a ruling of Ashafiri, if the merchandise is described in a way that prevents the buyer's complete ignorance of it, meaning... If the merchandise were completely described, then the sale is allowed. Then according to the saying, you can just go into that restaurant, assuming, Yanni, you paid for everything properly. You can just, when they say, uh, excuse me, here, your order's ready, and it's all bagged up. According to this saying here, the second one, you can just take that without looking, and then when you get home and you look and you see that it looks like what it's supposed to be, then you can accept that and this is valid. So this first one though, there's gonna be times when you definitely want to employ that. Even if you don't take that saying all the time, don't disregard it. Wallahu a'lam. We'll stop there. Do you have any questions? Assalamu alaikum Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Can you spell it, uh, what I actually spell uh, about when hiring an individual and an uh, agency? Yeah. Jarot Vimma. Jarot Vimma. So Vimma means something that's on you. Your Vimma is like your account. So your account has been hired or your tab. Your tab has been hired. 
And when you when you hire someone or something in particular is called ijarat ain, the hiring of an individual or the rental of something in in particular. Barakallah fiqh. I mean, wafiq. Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. 